Hello. Thanks for joining STC23 and this session. I'm Sao Kim, and I'm in charge of developing image processing algorithm and designing the structure of picture quality enhancement pipeline in Samsung. Today, I would like to introduce to programmable PQ architecture, picture quality enhancement architecture that we intend to make use of in the future. The terms TBSOC and PQE may be unfamiliar to some audience, so I think we need a little background explanation. So I would like to offer a brief introduction to the characteristic of TBSOC and the meaning of PQE in it. After a brief explanation of this, I will explain what is programmable architecture and what is the difference with the conventional architecture. After outlining how PQE architecture has changed from the past to the current to the future, I would like to summarize this presentation after, what, after explaining what we want to achieve through programmable PQE architecture we propose. Uh, TBSOC is specially designed according to the characteristic of large display device. The SOC contains interface unit that performs uh, connect external devices and processor unit which handles various operations and PQE unit that performs picture quality related tests. The major difference between TBSOC and other SOC is the importance of PQE block. After all, better picture quality is one of the most important reasons to buy TV. Because TV is watching for device, a device for watching, and it is a large display device, so it makes sense. The PQE inside TV SOC can be divided into three main sections. Firstly, signal processing takes video as an input and it produces video output. Academically, it corresponds to image processing and specific examples include noise reduction, super resolution, parameter of conversion, and so on. Uh, for each understanding of letter part of this presentation, I read some simple uh, explanation about super resolution. Uh, when you have 8K display device, and if you get 2K size image, then you should make larger image than input. So you should fill the empty data. The super resolution will do that. And so you can simply think resolution is a kind of upscale block. And frame rate of conversion is also a similar one, but it fills empty data in time domain. So if you have 120 hertz display device and you just get 60 FPS input data, you can make it double frame by using frame rate of conversion. Okay, let's move on to input analysis part. Input analysis is correspond to computer vision field in academically. So it is similarly take video input, but produces analyzed information output. Specifically examples include object recognition or face detection, and so on. <coughs> the display adjustment Block is some um, more TV specific functions. Specifically, uh, in LCD TV, there is a backlight unit and there should be backlight control unit to improve the perceptual picture quality. And in OLED display case, which is a self emitting device, we usually make a burning protection unit. So that kind of blocks are display adjustment part. Now that 
I explain TBSOC and PQ architecture. So it's time to talk about the meaning of programmable. We want to evolve PQ architecture to be programmable, a concept that is more advanced one compared to existing fixed hardware architecture. This new architecture must be programmable in two ways. First, each algorithm must be programmable. In other words, various algorithms can be developed, and these improved algorithms can be updated through an online connection. Second, from the perspective of the picture quality pipeline, the occupation ratio, and the sequence of each box must be able to be adjusted. You can control occupation ratio by selecting the right version of some block or using the performance of version that block. Or we can exclude some blocks if that block is not required anymore. You will see many rectangles and circles from this slide. These rectangles means fixed hardware architecture, and circles means programmable blocks. Circles look softer. Before going further, I'll explain what the current PQ architecture is like and what direction we are going to move forward. Here is a PQ architecture in the past, not now. Each block has its specialized logic and predefined position in pipeline. Therefore, it was a natural step to design all blocks in fixed hardware. Although fixed architecture do not have, does not have any flexibility at all, but it's the best choice. So customers who purchased our TV device could only be provided the picture quality at the time of purchase, although we continuously develop advanced algorithms. Let's look at what changed now. Recently, research in the field of computer vision based on deep learning has been developed remarkably. These deep learning based algorithms use common operations if they have different purposes. For example, face detection or object recognition, both of them use convolution operation although they have different purpose. As a result, the input analysis part here has been programmable and is currently provided to customers. This allows us to provide still new features to our customers. Of course, the development based on deep learning also occurred for image processing too. However, input analysis part has a relatively tolerant demand for real-time operation. And also, real input analysis part requires less amount of computation and power compared to signal processing part. So that's why we were able to apply programmable architecture input analysis part first. But as I mentioned, the image processing field also has been developed using deep learning based algorithms. And there's one more thing uh, high efficiency and low power programmable processor are emerging as the technical completeness of programmable process increases. Therefore, we would like to provide a full programmable architecture including signal processing and display adjustment in the future. To summarize what I have explained so far, currently we provide hybrid picture architecture that preemptively make input analysis part programmable. Through this, we have accumulated management know-how of programmable architecture. In the future, 
you would like to provide a full programmable fig tree architecture thanks to the development of processor technology and deep learning based algorithms. Next, I'm going to show what we get out of that. The first benefit is continuous updating for the fig tree algorithm. When updates are available, customers will be able to continuously receive the most recently developed algorithms. Through this, we would like to provide consumers with improved picture quality. Not only improved picture quality, you can make a new algorithm which fit the changed viewing environment or new display types. Of course, these kinds of updates are only possible within the capability of the programmable processor. Thus, of course, we will continue to upgrade the programmable processor itself. And we can also get efficiency from flexible architecture. This is because we no longer have to implement exclusively used blocks. Here is a specific example. As I mentioned, for LCD TV, there is a bandwidth control unit. And for OLED display, there will be burning protection unit. So if we adopting programmable architecture, we do not need to implement both of them. And the two units can be switched according to each display. The other advantage point is that it is always fully utilized architecture. In existing fixed hardware architecture, temporal redundancy is inherently unavoidable depending on the scenario. For example, the 8K upscaling block will not be required for 8K input. It means if you have 8K display device, and if you get 8K image as input, then there is no need to upscale. So super resolution or upscale block is not required anymore. Similarly, if you have a 120 Hz display device, and you ready 120 Hz FP 20 Hz input data, frame rate or conversion block will not be used anymore. So if we use programmable architecture, the PQ pipeline can be freely reorganized depending on the scenarios. So for example, the AK input scenario, we can exclude that AK upscaling blocks and the secured resources will be distributed other blocks. So you can change the performance version instead of base version of blocks. Similarly, if FLC block will not be used in that case, you can distribute more resources, for example, upscaling blocks. In addition, uh, it is possible to use the programmable processor for general purpose beyond the PQE. For example, uh, let's assume that users turn off all PQE blocks. Then we can use this programmable processor for, for example, make a better sound or to make generate some artificial images is possible. I will wrap up the presentation with a brief summary. In this presentation, we wanted to present the future direction of the TV PQE architecture by introducing a programmable architecture. This new architecture is highly flexible, fully utilized, always and goes beyond the limit of the existing fixed architecture. It will lead to customer values. Latest algorithm can be continuously delivered to customers. And customers can get more optimized picture quality in various scenarios. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any question or discussion topic, you 
can find me, you can find me in networking journal. Thank you.